Chapter 2 Billy Molly Mandy Spends a Penny Once upon a time, Millie Molly Mandy found a penny in the pocket of an old coat. Millie Molly Mandy felt very rich indeed. She thought of all the things she could buy with it, and there were so many that she did not know which to choose. That is the worst of a penny. So Millie Molly Mandy asked everybody with whom she lived in the nice white cottage with the thatched roof what they would do with it if they were her. Put it in the bank, said Grandpa promptly. He was making up accounts. Millie Molly Mandy thought that a wise idea. Buy a skein of rainbow wool and learn to knit, said Grandma, who was knitting by the kitchen door. Millie Molly Mandy thought that a good idea. Buy some seeds and grow mustard and cress, said Father, who was gardening. Millie Molly Mandy thought that quite a good idea. Buy a little patty pan and make a cake in it, said Mother, who was cooking. Millie Molly Mandy thought that a very good idea. Save it up until you get three and I'll let you buy a baby duckling with them, said Uncle, who was scooping out corn for his chickens. Millie Molly Mandy thought that was an excellent idea. Get some sweets, said Auntie, who was very busy sewing and did not want to be interrupted. Millie Molly Mandy thought that a very pleasant idea. And then she went to her own little corner of the garden for a think, for she still could not make up her mind which of all those nice things she should do. She thought and thought for a long time. And then, what do you think she bought? Some mustard and cress seeds which she planted in a shallow box of earth and stood in a nice warm place by the tool shed. She watered it every day and shaded it if, it if the sun were too hot. And at last, the little seeds grew into a lovely clump of fresh green mustard and cress that made you quite long for some bread and butter to eat it with. When it was ready to cut, Millie Molly Mandy went to Mrs. Moggs, their neighbour down the road, who sometimes had summer visitors. Mrs. Moggs, said Millie Molly Mandy, if you should want some mustard and cress for your visitor's tea, I have some to sell. It's very good and quite cheap. Why, Millie Molly Mandy, said Mrs. Moggs, that's exactly what I am wanting. Is it ready for cutting now? So Millie Molly Mandy ran home and borrowed a pair of scissors and a little basket. And she snipped that lovely clump of fresh green mustard and cress, all but a tiny bit for her own tea, and carried it to Mrs. Moggs. And Mrs. Moggs gave her tuppence for it. So Millie Molly Mandy had done one of the nice things and spent her penny, and now she had two pennies. Then Millie Molly Mandy took one of those pennies to the little village shop and she bought a skein of beautiful rainbow wool. Grandma, she said when she got home, please will you teach me to knit a kettle holder? So Grandma found some knitting needles and showed Millie Molly Mandy how to knit. And though it had to be undone several times at first, Millie Molly Mandy really did knit quite a nice kettle holder and there was just enough wool for it. When she had put a loop in one corner to hang it up by, she went to Mother, who was just putting the potatoes on to boil. Mother, said Millie Molly Mandy, would you think this kettle holder worth a penny? Why, Millie Molly Mandy, said Mother, that is exactly what I am wanting, for my old one is all worn out. But the penny only pays for the wool, so you are making me a present of all your trouble. And Mother gave Millie Molly Mandy a penny and a kiss, and Millie Molly Mandy felt well paid. So Millie Molly Mandy had done another of the nice things, had spent her penny and learnt to knit, and still she had her penny. Then Millie Molly Mandy took her penny down to the little village shop and bought a shiny tin patty pan. And next baking day, Mother let her make a little cake in the patty pan and put it in the oven. And it was such a beautiful little cake and so nicely browned that it seemed almost too good to eat. Millie Molly Mandy put it outside on the windowsill to cool. 
Presently along came a cyclist, and as it was a very hot day, she stopped at the nice white cottage with the thatched roof and asked Milly Molly Mandy's mother if she could have a glass of milk. And while she was drinking it, she saw the little cake on the window sill. And the little cake looked so good that the lady cyclist felt hungry and asked if she could have that too. Milly Molly Mandy's mother looked at Milly Molly Mandy. And Milly Molly Mandy gave a little gulp and said, Yes. And the cyclist ate up the little patty cake and she did enjoy it. When she had gone, Millie Molly Mandy's mother took up the pennies the cyclist had put on the table for the milk and the cake, and she gave one to Millie Molly Mandy because it was her cake. So Millie Molly Mandy had done yet another of the nice things and spent her penny, but still she had her penny. Then Millie Molly Mandy took her penny down to the little village shop and bought some sweets, lovely big aniseed balls that changed colour as you sucked them. She would not eat one until she got home and then gave one to Grandpa and one to Grandma and one to Father and one to Mother and one to Uncle and one to Auntie and then she found there were six for herself. So she ate them and they were very nice. So Millie Molly Mandy had done another of the nice things and spent her penny but she still had one penny from the mustard and cress. Then she went to Grandpa and asked him please to put it in the bank for her. And then she went to Uncle. Uncle, said Millie Molly Mandy, I've done everything with my penny that everybody said but you. And though I can't buy a little baby duckling yet, I've got a penny saved towards it in the bank. And it was not very long before Millie Molly Mandy had saved up to three pence. And then Uncle let her have a little yellow baby duckling, all for her own.